Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the EVGA 1650XC. Now one of the things I do need to say to you straight away is there are actually two XC models out there. They look exactly the same but one of them has a 1665 megahertz boost and the other one's got an 1860 megahertz boost. Now, we have reviewed the more expensive one, which is the 1860 megahertz boost model, which comes in at 165 pounds, which is a lot of money for a 1650. But there is a version out there, like I said, with a lower overclock, which is just 150 pounds. And if you click through to the OC3D website, you can go and have a look at all the benchmarks and stuff if you're interested. But the long and short of it is, this more expensive model has pretty much performed the same as a 147 pound gigabyte model, which is much narrower, because you can see this one is a triple slot. So even though it's an ITX kind of length, well, a little bit over an ITX kind of length, but you get my point, it's actually quite a big slot. So if you were to put this in an MATX motherboard, it'd pretty much cover the whole of the board. So the, the, the depth of it is only really gonna be any use to you if you're on MATX with just a single graphics card or you're on an ATX, I mean, you, you, can, you do get the point that it is going to look a bit bigger and nicer than it actually is. But the, in reality, the extra depth doesn't really bring you any massive performance uh, benefits compared to some of the other cards. It's got quite a big black aluminium heat sink that you can see. It kind of reminds me of like a posh old Intel heat sink. But like I said, I, I looked at one of the other ones and it was a uh, the base kind of gigabyte model, 147 pound twin fan, uh, and they were on par. Uh, even though the gigabyte had a lower um, stock clock, they even at stock and overclocked, they were perfor performing kind of around about the same kind of price point. But obviously this one's 15 pounds more expensive. So it's one of those ones where I think you would end up buying it purely based on its aesthetics. But if it was me, and this is the reason why I'm making this video, I genuinely would say to you guys, buy the version that is 150 quid, the cheaper model, and then just use the, um, the overclocking tool that you get with the EVGA to it will overclock it for you. It's like a, an extra boost option, so you can you can hit that. It's called the OC scanner. You do that, and it will overclock it for you manually. Uh, it will overclock it for you, or just do it manually. But what I genuinely would say is, unless you're absolutely petrified of overclocking, I would just buy the cheaper one. And if you are petrified of overclocking, I don't really think that the fifteen pound price tag on this is really worth it. I'd literally just get a mate round to give you a hand, follow some guides online, that sort of thing, because they're really not hard. Turn the power boost up a little bit and then literally notch the um, offset up a little bit at a time and then just run a benchmark. One thing you do have to do though, and I do need to stress this, is you need, every time you go up sort of like 25 megahertz on your offset, run some games, run some benchmarks, because you can overclock them to the point that the scores will start to come back down again because you can overclock them too far and they'll still be stable but the scores start to drop so you do have to find a bit of a sweet spot just to give you a little bit of a hint there so it's a good looking card but the at the end of the day it's the 1650 and the extra bits and bobs I don't really think are worth the extra money so if you want an EVGA 1650 buy the cheaper model